We're going to look at our second rate of reaction experiment, and this is called the disappearing cross. Uh, we're first of all going to deal with what actually happens during the chemical reaction. Uh, this chemical reaction takes place between two chemicals. One of them is hydrochloric acid, and the other one is something called sodium thiosulfate. So this is hydrochloric acid. And this is sodium thiosulfate. Now both of these are dissolved in water. So we say that they are aqueous solutions. That's what these AQ mean. Now when these chemicals react, they produce sodium chloride, which is also dissolved in water. Uh, they produce water. They produce a gas called sulfur dioxide, and they also produce sulfur. Now, in this case, the sulfur, and I'll just balance that up there. In this case, the sulfur is not soluble in water, so it's got an S after it. And what that means is that it forms a precipitate or goes cloudy. So the sulfur produced is not soluble. So solution turns cloudy, and we call that a precipitate. So that's how we're going to uh, measure this rate of reaction. Because we mix these two chemicals together in a conical flask, and we put that conical flask on a piece of paper or a tile which has a black cross on it. And we look over the top, so that's an eye looking over the top of this chemical, and we time how long it takes until we can no longer see the cross. So that allows us to identify the dependent variable in this reaction. So the dependent variable is the time taken For the cross to disappear. So time taken is our dependent variable. Time is the dependent variable. We could use this to work out the rate of reaction. Okay, so that's an introduction to the reaction. We don't need to understand, I don't need to know this equation, we just need to understand a few things about it. And the most important thing is that it produces sulfur, which is a, a solid, it doesn't dissolve in water, so the solution turns cloudy. And that we can measure how long it takes for the solution to turn cloudy by putting the conical flask with the reaction in it on uh, a tile or a piece of paper with a black cross. So let's think about how we actually do the experiment and come up with our independent variable. So the independent variable in this experiment is going to be the concentration. And we're going to look at the concentration of sodium thiosulfate. So that's this chemical here. Na2S2O3 is sodium thiosulfate. I'll write that under there just one more time so we are aware. But from now on, thiosulfate. From now on, um, I'm going to be using the symbol Na2S2O3. So what we do is we have a bottle of hydrochloric acid, HCl, and we use, or we use a measuring cylinder to measure out 10 cubic centimetres of hydrochloric acid. We then get a bottle of sodium thiosulfate, Na2S2O3, that's the formula for it, and we use a measuring cylinder to measure 25 cubic centimetres of this. We then mix both of these in a conical flask and that conical flask is on 
a piece of paper with a black cross on it and we look over the top of it so there's an eye looking down and we time how long it takes for it to go cloudy so there's my stopwatch and that's 0 0.40 seconds on there so that's a bit slow and we time how long does it take for the solution to turn cloudy so that will uh, the concentration of the sodium thiosulfate here has a value of 0 0.5 moles per cubic decimeter that's the concentration of it that's the one we're normally given so what we're going to do now is repeat this experiment but we're going to change the concentration of sodium thiosulfate let's look at how we do that so this was the experiment at 0 0.5 mole per cubic decimeter we're now going to reduce the concentration to 0 0.4 moles per cubic decimeter so in order for this test uh, uh, in, or, in order for us to control all the variables we're not going to change anything about the hydrochloric acid we are still going to measure out using a measuring cylinder 10 cubic centimeters of hydrochloric acid but this time when we get our bottle of sodium thiosulfate Na2S2O3 we only take 20 cubic centimeters previously we took 25 in order for the volume to be the same we add 5 cubic centimeters of water so we've diluted that down so that is now 20 cubic centimeters of sodium thiosulfate and 5 cubic centimeters of water so the concentration of this is now four fifths the concentration that we had to start with so it's 0 0.5 moles per cubic decimeter we then take this this mix them together in a conical flask make sure the conical flask is on top of a piece of paper or a tile with a cross on it look over the top of it time how long it takes For the cross to disappear and I think made this 0 0.50 seconds here um, because it's probably going to take longer because we've reduced the concentration so let's just review um, our variables now so the dependent variable is the time taken for the cross to disappear I'm just going to say cross to disappear the independent variable is the concentration and I'm going to abbreviate that to C-O-N-C dot conk of sodium thiosulfate Na2S2O3 now all of the variables that we need to control we will need to control the temperature so we don't change the temperature we make sure we do the experiment on the same day um, we need to control the volume of HCl and sodium thiosulfate so if we look back at our experiment here in the first experiment we used 10 cubic centimeters of hydrochloric acid in the second experiment we did as well the volume of the sodium thiosulfate is the same every time 25 cubic centimeters of sodium thiosulfate 20 cubic centimeters but we've added 5 cubic centimeters to keep it um, the total volume 25 um, and we will also need to keep the concentration which I'm going to say the CONC conch of HCl the concentration of the hydrochloric acid the same so in terms of a graph and we're going to deal with these in more detail in future lessons but what we'd expect to see is if we were to plot four different concent sorry five concentrations along the bottom so 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 and those are moles per cubic decimeter um, we would expect to see this happen 
So at the higher concentrations, it takes less time for the cross to disappear. So this is the fastest rate. So at here, we've got um, quickest time, therefore fastest rate at this point in the experiment. And then we'd repeat this experiment at 0 0.3 miles per cubic decimeter, 0 0.2 and 0 0.1 by changing the relative amount of sodium thiosulfate and water. So I'm going to zoom out on here so hopefully you can see the whole page and we've made some notes as we've gone along. And that's it. Thank you very much.